In last week's Astro Challenge, I showed you how to edit the Andromeda Galaxy in just 10 minutes. Today, I want to show you how to edit a wide angle image with a star tracker. We got a lot to cover, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is go into Adobe Bridge, select both of my photos, right click, and open Camera Raw. Like I said, we only have 10 minutes today, so I'm going to fly through this, but I'll still try and give you some valuable information. And in this case, with my foreground image, I want to do some basic adjustments to the highlights, the shadows, the exposure, and the contrast. And another thing that really helps is bringing up the saturation all the way to 100. That way you can adjust the temperature and tint to get some realistic looking colors. Because the more saturation that's here, the easier it'll be to see. In my case, I know these rocks were gray. That looks pretty gray to me. Now I can lower the saturation back down to a reasonable amount. That looks great. At this point, I'm already almost done. I can apply my profile corrections though to fix the vignette. That looks perfect. All right, I'm happy with this as my foreground, but now I need to sync these settings with my sky. I can select both my images, sync the settings, and because I did everything properly in camera out there on location, this is gonna be a very easy blend, and it'll be a faithful blend as well. With both of my images selected, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and open these as objects. That's really important. Hold down shift, open objects. That's going to create smart objects in Photoshop. What that means is that we can always go back and re-edit our raw photos if things look kind of fake when we blend them together. And that's kind of difficult to do, but like I said, I'll show you some tricks that'll really help you out. Now that I have both images loaded up in Photoshop, I'm going to drag my sky layer up to my foreground tab, drag it down with the help of the move tool, and then just rearrange them. Now I want to rename my layers to sky and foreground and then duplicate my foreground layer. I'll right click on it, duplicate layer, just hit OK, drag it on top. What I'm trying to do right now is just get my proper layer structure, foreground copy, sky in the middle, foreground. It's really important you have those layers in that order. At this point, with everything loaded in, now we can begin our blending. And for that, we're going to use the Easy Panel 2.0 from Jimmy McIntyre. This is a free download. I recommend everybody grab it. Once you have Easy Panel 2.0 installed, we'll just click on either bright or dark LMs. These are luminosity masks. They're going to measure the brightness of your image and create a mask based on that. Once you've clicked on the button and everything finishes, you can click one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to find the one that has the most contrast between the foreground and the sky in this case. Darks 3 I think will work the best. What I want is the sky completely black, the foreground completely white. And one thing that really helps is just grabbing a black paintbrush. With my black paintbrush selected, I'm just going to paint in the sky. Again, I want the sky completely black, the foreground completely white. But I only want to tag these areas with a brush that are easy to reach. I don't want to get close to the horizon. If I do, I'll probably accidentally paint in the horizon and really screw myself up. So I'm trying to be cautious here, but I want to stress, this is where you would want to spend 10 minutes alone is this stage of the workflow where you go in here and you do your blending. Because if you screw this up, nothing else is going to work properly. In my case though, I only have 10 minutes total today, and that's why this is a very difficult challenge for me. So I'm just trying to get as much as I can done and as fast as possible. Once I've gotten most of the foreground white, and most of the sky black. Then I can switch over to some other tools, which I'll show you in just a minute. But again, stay far away from that horizon because you don't want to accidentally paint in anything that you don't mean to. All right, we're doing pretty good on time. At this stage, I'm gonna use my dodging and burning tools. That's really the secret. So if I dodge, I can tag the foreground, then I can burn to tag the sky. And this is the secret to success when you're using a star tracker and trying to blend because now I can reach all these little areas with the bushes and the tree branches and everything else. I don't have to spend hours coming in here and paying it out by hand. With the dodging and burning tools, I can literally do this in just a few minutes. Like I said though, this is where you'd want to spend a substantial amount of time. I don't have that luxury today for this challenge, but normally I would spend 10 minutes alone just on this stage that I'm doing right now because if you screw something up here and you don't catch it and you're 20 minutes into the workflow, you'll have to come all the way back to the stage and you don't want to do that, I can tell you. All right, once my sky is completely black and my foreground is completely white, the closest I can get anyway, 
Normally I'd zoom in, check over every little nook and cranny. Now what I want to do is go back to Easy Panel and click Make Selection. From here, we're just going to add a layer mask to our foreground copy layer. If we do all that correctly, you might not even saw what happened, but look what happens now. If I move my sky around a little bit, there's our before and after. We now have sharp stars where before they were blurry. That's the power of this technique that I've just showed you today. I think this is going to look great. The skies rotate a little bit. That's just because I took too long to set up my star tracker. But look at that now. We have sharp stars right next to those bushes. That would have been impossible to do freehand. I mean, it would have taken you hours and hours. And we did it in just a few seconds here. I could have obviously done a lot better, but we don't have enough time for that today. I just want to show you that with the help of these luminosity masks, we can paint in bushes and still have a great final result. Okay, we're just about halfway done. Now what I want to do is utilize those smart objects. So maybe I think my sky is a little bit, I actually think it looks fine, but if I double click on the thumbnail here, that's going to take me right back to camera raw. Remember, these are smart objects. So from here, I can do any adjustments I want. Maybe I want to add a little bit of contrast, then I'll hit OK. It's now going to apply those adjustments in real time to my sky layer. You saw that right there. And I think that looks great. I can also double click on my foreground and say, you know, I think it's a little bit too bright and it looks kind of fake. And if that is true, I'll just lower the exposure a little bit and then hit OK. This really speeds things up having these smart objects and it'll make your life a lot easier. To me, I think that looks fine. Now what I want to do is maybe add a vignette. And I only want that to apply the sky though. So maybe add a light vignette right there. Maybe if I don't like that though, I'll do a big vignette. This is Raya Pro from Jimmy McIntyre. This is a plugin you, you can buy for Photoshop. I really enjoy it. Again, that's Raya Pro. If you search for Jimmy McIntyre, you'll find more. He's got some amazing tutorials. But anyway, now that I've got that vignette, I can do some selective color adjustments. We talked about this in last week's video. Selective color though, this really allows you to pull out whatever colors you want. And if you do it correctly, it looks great. If you mess it up, it's going to look pretty bad. I think that looks fine though. And we're really kind of close on time. One thing that helps at this stage, I'll just hit Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E if you're on a Mac. And then I can uh, maybe go Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Now I'm going to apply this to the entire image that I've just essentially flattened. I can add a little vignette here, bring in the midpoint so it comes in, and then I can, if I want to make the image a bit brighter, add some contrast, bring up the shadows. It's just an easy way to do things. You don't have to have a degree in Photoshop to do it. You can just move some sliders. That's why I'm showing you this. And I think that looks fine there. A little too saturated though. All right. If you want to do some noise reduction, you can do that. I think we're all good though. I'll hit okay. Yeah, see how much better that looks with just one filter? That looks amazing. Okay, so now what I want to do is add a curves layer, use my hand tool, and say I want the North American Nebula here to be a little bit brighter, but the dust clouds behind it a little bit darker. I've just added some contrast. I only want this to apply at the sky though. Thankfully we have our layer mask. If you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can click and drag this up to copy it in. Control or Command I to invert it. Now it's only applying to the sky. I know I'm probably losing most of you, but again, check out my courses for more information because I'll go through this a lot slower and really explain what's going on. Uh, we only have about a minute left. What do I want to do? We'll do uh, film effects. Right now I'm doing magic green landscapes. This is a filter part of Raya Pro, and I think it's a lot of fun to mess around with. I hopefully I'll have enough time to complete it though. But once it applies, you have all these different things. I'm gonna turn off most of them actually. I just want mainly that Orton effect. Probably could have just done that, but whatever. Okay, and then I can lower the overall opacity of this layer just so it's a subtle boost. Yep. And there we go. I think we're actually done even a little faster. But there we go, there's our final image. And I think that turned out really well in just 10 minutes. So before we go, we'll do a quick recap. But the main point I want to show you today is that if you do things correctly in camera, 
you really won't have that much of a hard time blending the two together if you utilize the smart objects and the luminosity masks and everything else I showed you today. Admittedly, it was very fast though. Uh, but now let's take a look at our before and after and then we'll call it a day. Here is our original foreground as it came straight out of the camera. You'll notice it's very flat, it's dark, there's a heavy vignette in the corners, and most obviously we have star trails. You can even see the North Star over here. And in fact, the stars are blurry because I focused on the foreground, which is pretty close to my camera. So all these different problems were compounded, but because I was using a star tracker, I was able to take a four minute long shot for just the stars. And my foreground blurred out, but who cares? Uh, my stars are nice and sharp. And that's the big thing. Once I had my sharp stars and my sharp foreground, we did some edits and we got our final image right here, which looks a hundred times better, I'd say. I think it looks really nice, actually. That might be one of my favorite edits of this. And that's one thing I wanna leave you with. Every time you edit a photo, even if you follow a recipe, it's gonna turn out differently because maybe you wanna take a little more uh, of a color cast or whatever you wanna do. Another thing you wanna think about is, I might really like the way this looks now, but tomorrow I could look at this image and say, oh, what did I do? Maybe the color balance is off, whatever it is. So it's always a good idea before you share this online with your friends or whoever, save the image as a TIFF file, come back and look at it in a few hours or tomorrow, and when you're looking at it with fresh eyes, you'll immediately notice any problems, and you can go and fix them. There's been plenty of times where I've shared a photo only to realize there was a horrible color cast they didn't realize or anything like that. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Like I said, if you want to learn even more, uh, the best thing you could probably do is check out my Patreon. It's only 10 bucks a month, and we cover a lot of things like this. Or if you want to get even more content, I've got some courses on my website, specifically the Astro post-processing course. That'll show you how to blend your photos together, the wide-angle images with a star tracker. That is a very good investment if you're having issues. But that's all I've got for you today. And now that you've seen how to successfully and cleanly blend your foreground with your sky, hopefully you can give that a shot and have a little bit better success with your own images.